Ole, ole, ole. Oh, sorry, I had to. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? William Stewart, Sean Green, Nick to share in the background. I almost got up and danced a little bit, but I figured I'd, I'd be like full crotch view. That's not good. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> Jules Van Doggen. We've got uh, Steve Hilker, a.k.a. Porky tonight. See who got who this evening on the Laugh Cage. Show. Why, did, why didn't you You're say, welcome. speaking of speaking of crotches, we got Jules Van Doggen. <laughs> Porky. Hey, let me tell you what. The player chat has been phenomenal. Oh, my coming gosh. Up. I just saw some good stuff coming from Steve and, and Jules. As they're just going back and forth on some phenomenal just takes i love it i love it i love when you're able to see that kind of stuff so here we go folks this is going to be a good one tonight uh interesting little battle jules taking on uh porky uh in this well winter side matchup sean yeah listen i love porky to death okay uh but i feel like we're about to have a, a pork roast tonight buddy it just <laughs> it it seems it seems like that's that's the the possibility here. Uh, I'm just going to throw out the worst average that Jules has had this season is a 5.63. Um, and that was, I believe, the last match that he played. Uh, Porky's best average is a 5.09. And listen, that doesn't mean that that can come closer together. But what it does mean is that Porky cannot lose a single leg with the throw that he has tonight. I just don't think he has the firepower to make up for it against the throw. You can say he may get away with one, but I think you're right. He's got he's got to hold his throw here and and just maintain. Uh, we'll see. But you're predicting a little uh, Dutch jag and roasted and barbecuing some uh, pig this evening. We'll see what happens. Being that uh, Jules is from Kansas City, he knows a few things about <laughs> barbecue or from that area nowadays. But here we go, folks. Let's get his location. He's playing at Sharks right now, been playing for only quote unquote four years. He's play, been playing off and on for a little bit longer than that. But 5.67 for the NPR, a 70.7 win rate. How about uh, we've got 26 nine marks, 89 seven marks, and one white horse for Jules. And he uh, claims to be hungry. Claim to be as, as hungry as, as porky. porky. I like yeah. that. I like, yeah. that. I like um, that. We'll see. Yeah, some other things that are not listed there. Um, you know, he's a PDC professional dart player. Um, he's he's going to be starring in a movie uh, that is starting filming this week. So that's going to be exciting. Um, but yeah, so it, listen, he's he's been doing it all. And uh, I just, it's going to be tough to beat him. It's going to be tough to beat him tonight. It, it certainly will, but we'll see here. Here's his uh, competitor that he's oh, going to yeah. take on. It's going to be Mr. Steve Hilger, a.k.a. Porky. Give us a thing or two. Yeah, he is playing from the Bull Shooter Saloon, not Sharks. Um, that would be really weird if they just showed up to the same location. Uh, he's actually from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, playing for 31 years, so a bit longer than Jules has been. Um, not on this planet, but like close to that, you know. Uh, 4.95 NPR, 66.7% win rate. He's throwing the L style uh, bar lip house darts, 12.5 gram, uh, 4.95 average, true. like I said. Yep. Uh, 24 nine marks with three white horses, 44 seven marks, 54 white or five marks, and 39 games played with his win percentage again being 66.7. But yeah, man, it, the one stat that still just is always going to stick with me is his best average so far in the CSC is a 5.09. Jules is worse as a six or as a five point six three. So those ceilings and floors are pretty separated still. We'll, we'll see. He's going to pull out some quality stuff. Let's take a look here at uh, well, a new bar that we're featuring here, Bull Shooter Saloon. You can yep. see Garrett Rakowski, I believe that's Allison back there, as well as her husband, a few others supporting and uh, cheering on. Well, Garrett, well, Camille, and and Zyla are doing this evening. They're cheering on Dad and folks. Uh, oh yeah, just a little. Humdinger, that's the that's the kiddos. So, yep. uh, man, are they pesky? They're annoying. As, no, I'm just kidding, ladies. Come on, you know I'm just kidding. You know I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, it looks like Jules is going to get started here. So let's, if you've never watched before, let's go over the format and specific rules of the CSC Challenger Series. It is a double elimination style tournament. Players play a race to nine, best of seventeen legs, all cricket with a cork or three dart count up to start the match that you're seeing here. The loser of the previous leg will start the next leg after that, and if either player is down three or more legs, they will continue to go first until the deficit is reduced to two legs. This is the PPD player advantage rule, and if we go the distance, we're going for speed. The players will cork for start in the last leg decider. You're welcome. 
I wish you could be just a slightly, slightly faster. That's all I want. Just slightly faster on that. You're uh, like almost anticipated a little bit, you know, but look at this. Everyone in the chat is uh, going the direction of jewels, except for Ramon says Steve nine zero. And that's the type of stuff that I'm going to need tonight is, uh, is all that to keep us it. going. Hey, Sally I Kelly in the chat, it. uh, guys entering into our live stream giveaway. Like all of those folks are doing right now, just by putting a scoreline prediction, leaving a comment of any time on Facebook, we'll get entered in for tonight's chance to win tonight's live stream giveaway raffle from a to z darts.com for your choice of a colonial drop sleeve dart case. You can choose from black, white, red, and blue. Uh, best of luck to all of our live stream viewers. And I want to give a special shout out real quick to a to z darts.com as we get started here. Um, Jen mounts uh, and company. I'm wearing our brand new uh, magic wear a to z darts jersey tonight uh, to sponsor our youth dart club, uh, Westfield Middle School dart club. So uh, shout out for the great work as always and for supporting our, our club. Um, they got a brand new darts. Each kid got brand new colonial darts, uh, steel tip darts and uh, and a jersey. Uh, so wow, that's awesome. Yeah, just amazing, amazing uh, all the support that everyone gives us, but uh, specifically this year uh, and last year, Magic Wear and A to Z knocked out of the park. So love this jersey. We are definitely underway here. Steve Hilger takes the point advantage, but what does uh, Jules got for him? Uh, I like this one from uh, Jim Turrentine, who said, "Is it uh, is it nap time yet?" Uh, asking for a friend in regards to uh, uh, Porky. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, he'll take I a little you, uh, quick snoozer there at the at the break. He may, he may. He was asking about a break earlier. He, he reached <laughs> out and and said, uh, "Are we taking a break at all? Are we going straight straight through?" I wonder. So uh, that just shows you Porky somewhat watches our show. Yep, and you see he is throwing those bar darts, which is amazing. Yeah, that's no joke, folks. He, yep. he those bar lip darts. I think they're what ten dollars for a full set of three, and he just pulls them out and rocks them and. And and throws him well. He's always been throwing something like that, and just just works for him. Well, he's gonna have to work on these fifteens here if he hopes to stay in this leg. And he how is. About a, how about a first nine? Boom goes the Wisconsinite there for Steve Hilger, getting our first on the stream this evening. I don't. I honestly think if that was gonna be on the uh, betting option. That probably wouldn't have been the bet that a lot of people would have taken. They would have definitely taken Jules for the first night of the evening. Yeah, I mean, you're see, you're seeing what Jules is doing though. He, his ceiling or, or his floor of a round is a five mark, which is just tough to to really yeah. to really get past. Uh, but you're also seeing what Porky's doing. He's trying to close everything quickly. Uh, you're seeing him be very aggressive on the starboard. It's because, and will you know this? If you're going to average. 0.5 less than your opponent. You cannot play a point battle with them for a longer period of time because it's going to eventually turn into this. Boom goes the dynamite there for the dragon. Getting his first. Averages plan out or pan out. The faster you play, the the quicker those averages don't matter. Yeah, big shots there from Jules to kind of take the advantage away. And Ooh. Steve tried to get a big round there, but this should sway to jewels and like we said we don't mean to feel like we're pushing steve hilger down and out of this one it's just averages have played a big difference in this one and jewels definitely sways in his advantage for this match so yep steve knows what he's gonna have to do to win this one uh he he made that uh uh relevant when i chatted with him throughout the last two or three weeks and uh he knows what it's gonna have to take to win this match and it's gonna take his a plus game and jewels maybe slipping into his b game well, that was a big shot there from Jules on dart three because the triple 16 got him over the threshold of, of giving Steve winning darts. Uh, just because you never know. So now he needs two bowls here to win leg number one. Um, someone in the chat asking, it's Patrick McGinnis asking, uh, is Jules playing at Applebee's? Uh, no, it's Sharks uh, in Shawnee, Kansas, which is a very, very, very big, big dart bar. Uh, one hundred percent, and they just extended it out. But they got a, uh, they also they have a, um, one of those new golf simulators in there now. Ooh, they, what? Al they also have a new, yeah, they've got a new area 
for uh, some dart boards. So Sharks, um, the uh, uh, Shark Tank shootout there is going to be pretty massive Labor Day weekend. It's going to continue to grow. So looking forward to that one in, uh, uh, well, August, September. You had me at Golf Simulator. Yeah, uh, pretty incredible what he did. He told me about it. I was like, no way. He says, yep. And he sent me the uh, picture afterwards. It's, it's looking, it looks pretty good. That's some bougie stuff. That's actually there. where we, that extra room is actually where we did the Bulls interviews with uh, oh. Jules, Dan Meyer, Travis Keys, and yep. Royce Williams, which will come out here in the next day or two. Yeah, I've seen a couple of them. They, you did great work with that. It was, it was entertaining. Yeah. Looking forward to uh, the production coming out, which you're going to be a part of. So. Yeah, I'll be meeting them on Wednesday. There you go. Well, I've met Dan, Hello. but but I'll get to meet uh, Travis and Royce and everyone else. All right, Porky. Close them down, going back to points. And again, this is where the pressure is going to be on Porky this entire time. He cannot lose a leg that he starts first. I just don't think he's going to have the firepower to to do anything about it. And you Dude, see that eight mark from Jules. That was a big eight mark right there. Or as Jeez. he would call it, a 142 checkout. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Bull Shooters does have some attendance down there. That's Robbie Wizkid in the background, just in the corner up there. You see Garrett Rakowski. Yep. Yep. Cheering on as well. I'm sure there's a lot of support for Jules. I know that uh, Steve Shope is up there. I wonder if Mike Brewer's up there as well as a few others. Uh, looks to there's be, a uh, baby. Yeah. That is uh, Seth uh, Gossett, I believe, and his new kiddo. That's amazing. Supporting on. Jules even has babies rooting for him. Yeah. Some good, some good uh, support up there in that Kansas City area, especially for what Jules has been able to do and look at Steve here. This is a big moment. He tried his hand at it. He knew he had to, he had to take a shot there because Jules is just a lurking. And look at this. He's going to take a shot, get rid of the number. Yep. He'll go back. Now he'll make that smart move to go back. Only a four. We'll see if, uh, Porky can run to the brick house before uh, the bed, big bad wolf blows that house down. Looking good so far. Little pig, little pig, let me in. Boom goes the dynamite. That was fantastic. Steve oh, that was fantastic. All right. That was great. I'll <laughs> give you that one. And what a fire <laughs> right back from Jules. I was waiting for and the dragon roars. Nah. Uh, nah I can whatever. Think time. Whatever. Look at this. Back to back to back. Nine marks from these two gentlemen. Are you not entertained? We're here on leg number two of the CSC Chatter Series Division One. And let's see where Jules goes on dart three. Yep. Look at the sixteens. Did a little back back kick and a clap there from Jules. A little all shucks. Oh, needing to, oh that's a door opener. Not anymore. Oh. He goes right at it, too. I love it. 5.38 defeats the 5.43 of, of uh, Jules Van Dongen. So 1-1 one, one score line. I'll say this, a 529 and a 538 there from Steve. If he can yep. hold true on those numbers, he can skirt by in this He's match in this. with a 97 yep. or 9 or 98, yep. no doubt. Yep. <laughs> How about that? Thank Scotty Burnett. Yeah, Scotty yeah. Burnett's in his 989 on the uh, super chats. Love that. New feature for us on USA Darts. Appreciate it. Yeah, and That's big awesome. shout out to Big shout out to partners promoting darts. A lot don't know it, but uh, we're able to kind of tag team these and just broadcast to more people by by pr pr producing this on USA Darts as well as partners promoting darts. So that's why that kind of works. Uh, yep. We're just pretty much the production offerer for this and just offer that service and and 
I mean, Nick does a phenomenal job setting up everything, and me and Sean just come in to commentate. And Partners Promoting and Arts just says, hey, have at it, boys, and have fun and enjoy it. Easiest and job in the business. I'm telling you, it's been it's been phenomenal what this has taken off and become. And look where we're at now. Some heavy hitters in our top, uh, well, I'll say top three of the winner's side now. Yep. A division one. Yeah. Winner tonight gets the great distinct pleasure of playing a race tonight against Danny Baggish for the King seat as there's a white horse from Jules Van Dongen. So we want to mention these because we haven't said it yet. Uh, Jules Van Dongen's uh, tail of the tape to get here. Tim Adams round one, Leonard Gates round two, and Kevin Schmitz in round three. For Steve Hilger, it was Jed Neal round one, Sean Kaflish in round two, and then Derek Hinkle in round three. So uh, there's kind of how they how they got to this point. Yep. And we'll wait till after this leg, but then we'll we'll go ahead and talk about it. Uh, I was about to say, should that be your cue in to go ahead and inform everybody? Yeah. Or, or no? We'll, we'll wait. We'll wait till after this leg is over because it's going to be a, a touch of a discussion. So. Oh boy, here we go. Everyone's like, "What? What's going on?" Ah. Well, this one is not going to do it here for for Steve. Doesn't look like it is. But that's Jewish. okay. Yeah, he should be able to grab hold of this leg and make this a two-one matchup. Honestly, for me, he can shoot ones all day against the throw. Um, his whole thing, if he just holds his throw each time, uh, it just <laughs> I, I, I just still hold think you gotta, I yeah. still think you got to try to steal one here and there. I mean, there, you can't well, just rely sure. on that. But hundred percent. But I'm just saying the pressure is going to be on him there. Well, from all the looks of this, Steve is. He oh, he knows he's, he, he's capable. More than yeah, capable. he, he knows what he's got to do tonight, and he's putting on a good show so far. But remember, Jules can breathe sevens for a few legs in a row, right? And that's that's where that's tough. Is if you're Porky, you can't rely on having getting a chance to break the throw ever against Jules because of what he can do firepower wise. And that's just, uh, just the real realistic way to look at it. And I think he would look at it the same way. All right. Two for the leg win. Another five plus. There you go. 5.10 from Jules. Okay. Yeah. Well, two to one. Let's talk about it. Some know, some have seen on Copy Sport that uh, we did have a match between, well, quote unquote, well, match between Mike and and Leonard uh, and Mike Advance. It, it's unfortunate, but due to scheduling and just how it ended up, Leonard was overseas still. We were going to try to. They wanted to try to make that match happen on Easter. That's very tough to do. Yep. Um, especially with family obligations and stuff. So um, we can't doubt that for happening. Um, yeah, Mike has like eighty kids. He, well, has that he, too. Well, I think he also I mean, had a trip trip planned as well and stuff. So yep. same thing, same thing. But it's unfortunate that there there is a rule. Yep. Brought to you by Partners Promoting Darts that says you know you got a week to play your match. Well, unfortunately, because Leonard was out yeah. of town out of the country for, for the majority of that and um, returned yesterday. It, Unfortunately, that just wasn't uh, doable. Um, and so and I based get, on the and, rule of, of them, I, I, I can tell you right now that after talking to Mike Maloney today, um, and if you know him, you already know this, what I'm about to say, uh, he would much rather play that match 10 times out of 10 than have something like this happen. Uh, and so uh, it's, it's a tough was, break, and we would obviously rather have that too, but – um, it's just, it's the way that, uh, that's taken care of. He was definitely upset about it. Like reaching out yep. to us beforehand. Very much kind of, yeah. yes. Yeah. And, and, and worried. that's, yeah. Yeah. And, and we can't blame Leonard because Leonard was over there for the champion champions event, which is a big deal. Yep. And they oh, stayed for, sure. for them. Why wouldn't you tag team that and make that a modus super series to try to get, get into so much money for modus. Yeah. Oh, if you, well, if you win the week, you get five grand. Yep. If you win the champions, of champions event or the, the weekend, the cha- like the champions weekend, I think it's 20 grand. Yeah. So why wouldn't you, you know, and that's pounds. Yep. Yep. So that's, 
It's a hefty amount in U.S. dollars. Look at that from Porky. 6.50 will win that leg. So you can even get through the whole conversation by the time yeah. Porky got that one taken care of. 6.5 from Porky. He's going to be like, you guys talked over that entire leg of some players not even in the tournament anymore. <laughs> and well, that's not a 6.5. <laughs> well, we had, to, we had to discuss it just to let everybody yeah, no, know. And there we go. And, that That's it. Yeah, it, it's one of those things where it, it – it's always going to be unfortunate when a player uh, moves on without playing a match. Um, but it just does happen. And it was one of those things where from both perspectives, you know, even Leonard, right? He plans all this stuff out months in advance, but he's planning for himself to be still on the winner side of the CSC Chandra series. Yeah. Um, in which case he would not have been playing uh, last week. So Porky starts off with a nine. Boom goes the Wisconsinite. That is our seventh nine mark, and we're in leg number five. And Jules going to fire right back, isn't he? Almost. He almost did. It's a six instead. And this is an opportunity for Steve to go ahead and possibly break throw here. Let's see what he can do. I mean, we're early stages, early stages of this leg. Don't get me wrong, but I think he senses the opportunity. Yep. And just last thing is that I'll, that I'll say to the situation and then we're, we'll move on is that unfortunately uh, I would have to agree that it's the, the, the rules are the rules um, that they're in place and, and all of that. And it's just something to where if it, if it's one time, then it could be multiple times. And yep. um, unfortunately yep. you just gotta, you gotta do that. And someone's expecting to play a match tonight against one of those two. Yep. So you can't have them also push back their stuff because of that, you know? So it well, just becomes a slippery slope that you can't really deal with. But right now, Porky attacking the throw of Jules to make me an idiot and also to potentially uh, give himself a, a, a break in this match at some point. Well, yeah, I mean, he need, I told you, I think he needs one one or two breaks here for sure and just add that comfortable factor. Add that comfortability factor in there and just maybe, you know, I don't think actually I don't think you can ever really feel comfortable with Jules Van Dogen, well, let's this. be honest, but we'll find out. He's putting Porky. on some he's putting on a good show here. Six point two five. He's feeling good. Okay, that was a terrible, terrible karaoke impress impersonation there. I agree. Well that was a good try. Like I turned that around on you. That was good, right? Yeah, that was good. I'll just say that. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, Porky, one, two, three needed. That's a good fall in. Did Wait, Scott. No. What are you talking about, bud? Yeah, that first start into the 15, which was a good fall in for sure. Uh-oh. And this is to steal it. Uh-oh. And he does steal it. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. And you saw Porky just gave a, a clap there. You make one little mistake. Well, I mean. And Steve, that can be an entire leg. Steve was throwing six there. Dropped down to a 5.40 yep. and, and just kind of fell short on those bulls and Jules took advantage with the 4.83 to win the leg. And or you just forget about that one. It was just to hold the throw is what you got to yep. think. That was a possibility for the nine, but that was huge. Wow. And, and that can feel like a, a loss. A, yeah. A loss of throw, you know, that can oh, 100%. Look, is what that can feel like. It shouldn't. And no, I can tell you, if you're if you're Steve, just continue to to keep doing what he's doing, which is what he's doing, because you're seeing Jules sometimes uh, become a little bit more human than than Dragon. Starts off with a two mark on the on the 19s. Someone asked earlier, "What's Jules listening to?" I'm gonna guess that it is uh, Dutch techno music, just because. <laughs> I know that it's his walk-on song and it's like a, a thing for Dutch players now, um, but you know they they do like that music a lot, so it's what it, what's it's what pumps him up. It's what he would be listening to otherwise. Oh, that's a mi big miss there for Porky. That's a big miss there for Porky, and this is an advantage for Jules here. Yeah, won't 
won't be able to get back full control. Yeah, but he can slam in this big triple here yeah. once again. That would have really opened the door for him just just to add in another triple there and forces force Steve's hand at least to four mark to move. Was pressure added? Yes, pressure has been added by Jules just by that simple uh oh. Simple round there. Yep. Yep, and Jules now has the high ground and the point lead. Steve got to fire back with a nine at some point. It doesn't have to be this turn. That would be nice. Yeah, he stays up there in the aggressive play. And I only like it because I know that's his strategy. If that makes sense. Taking a My shot. Goodness. No, stays right there. You never know. He could be listening to ABBA tonight. Very, very good possibility. Yep. Oh, and Porky throws up his good. hands. Yeah, this is this is definitely not good. As Jules can take full advantage here, Will closes out the 17s, moves on to the 16s, closes those and points on them as well. What an unfortunate turn of events. Lisa the, says uh, no ABBA. <laughs> <laughs> DJ Sefa. See, there you go. So guess who was right and who was wrong again. She, he may just listen to Lisa on repeat. Focus. Focus. No. No, Focus. there's no way that's happening. <laughs> I don't think she's ever said that uh, to him. It might be her cursing him out repeatedly to play better. She's a mother of dragons. She knows she breathes more fire than he does. <laughs> <laughs> Steve closes the 18s. <laughs> Jules did smile in the background. He uh, smiled, shook his head. It was, uh... <laughs> you know, Steve just didn't have it in this lay, and he takes advantage. Jules did fall into an 18, so it was a great close by Porky there. Uh, 5.13 from Jules does break the throw, and now the separation a little bit. Yeah, it's and that's, that, that's a big moment in this leg after, you know, Porky unfortunately gave up the last one, essentially. And uh, Jules is able to take advantage here in, in this one. So Hilger to start us off. Starts off with a five. Not a bad start. Hey guys, all month long, A to Z Darts is featuring the Emirate Dart Series from 180, plus a special raffle once again. Purchase purchase the Dart of the Month and automatically get entered into a special, a special raffle to win a set of 180 Magic Matt Mullen Darts. The raffle ends May 1st, and the winner will get their choice of soft tip 19 grams or steel tip 23 grams. Uh, good luck to all of our viewers. Also, make sure to check out the Shot AI launch and see how the worlds of AI and darts collide. You can say this is my first time reading this or browse the dart world launch with amazing new ranges. You can also read up on two new blogs, the U the A to Z travel guide for the U S darts masters and their in-depth darts shafts blog. Just head on over to the website for all your darting needs and stop having mm -hmm. Sean read scripts for the next 10 minutes at least. Cause I forgot how to read. Just kept getting words. Worse, words, but... are, words are right. Yeah. Still better than mine, let me tell you. Here we go. Borky trying to take advantage here in this one to make this 4-3 going into our break. Folks, we got some good interviews coming uh, your way, and one in particular is very appetizing. <laughs> so to speak. That was good. That was good. Oh. <laughs> uh. Well, never That's mind. Fair. I thought 
I thought it was maybe more appetizing. Fantastic. And now Nick Hollis in our background says it's not as appetizing anymore. I, I apologize, folks. Well, I already knew about the one beforehand, and I was expecting something of it from from you. So, at least a little input of it. Jeez. Are you still arguing with a person who does not have their mic turned on? Um... <laughs> You're so right. <laughs> You're so right. I can tell with how he was talking to you that he did not have his mic on. Because he he just... Listen, guys. For those of you who don't know, Nick has a get-on-the-mic voice uh, for when he actually is talking to like human beings like you guys. When he's talking to us, um, a.k.a. non-human beings, boom goes the dynamite, um, he will just use his normal voice. So uh, I knew right away that he was using his whisper normal voice while he was speaking to Will, and Will was just... Sorry about that, everybody. This is oh. Sean, the guy that always responds out loud to anything I say for the record. True. Uh, I just want to say, maximum professionals and boys, appreciate you guys as always. Thank you. <laughs> See, Thank there you, you go. We deserve that. Was that. His, that was his announcer voice. That was not his normal voice. All right, here we go. Hilger. He's got one needed to close out this leg and snag it away for a four to three score line. And then we all get a break. Yeah, we do have some players. We're just going to go eat a sandwich. He, he may scarf one down real quick. Don't make fun of him. Come on now, folks. Listen, uh, we will, Go ahead. I'm just going to say it. Four to three is a very respectful score line for, for, or for uh, Porky at this point. Um, that one break of throw might still cost him, but he definitely showed that he will have a chance to break a throw at one point after this. So as long as he keeps going with what he's going, he's got a shot, bud. This is not he's over. Certainly- no, it really isn't. And uh, four to three score line, folks. What could happen next? We'll uh, hear from these two, and then we'll be right back with more action. Brought to you by partners promoting Darts is William Stewart, Sean Green, Nick to share as we get a nice wave from Porky for I'm sure Camille and Zyla. We'll gotcha. be right back, folks. What's up, everyone? This is uh, Steve Hilger, a.k.a. Porky. I'll be playing out of uh, Bullshooter Saloon in Milwaukee. Just got the camera system installed today, so I'm excited. And uh, I shoot for Red's Novelty. Well, we're excited to have the well-renowned commentator, Steve Hilger, a.k.a. Porky, on the CSE Challenger Series. Uh, It's a pleasure to have you on our show. How does it feel to be on here? Yeah, you know, I'd rather be sleeping or eating, but, you know, when I got the call, I figured I'd answer. Going into this season, out of the 32 players in Division One, where would you have rated yourself among those players? You know, I was uh, I was at the top of Division Two, and then a couple people called in sick, so I got bumped up to one. So, I mean, I honestly, I put myself at the bottom of that average-wise on paper. Um, experience, you know, I, I'm always going to pick experience over like raw talent and things like that. You know, it's just a different mindset, you know, from playing league to playing a tournament and, and competing. But, you know, I, I put myself right at the bottom of the list. And then tonight you face off against the Dutch mm-hmm. Dragon, Jules Van Dong, and a lot of eyes have been on him this season. What's going to be your game plan to come out on top here? smash them <laughs> nah, I see they're not damaged I keep them in nice good condition he signed these for me at TOC um no nah, Jules is, is awesome guy you know I mean I'm just gonna have to bring it I know I have a big task in front of me um you know Jules is playing great both soft and steel you know and uh yeah I'm, I'm gonna see what I can do you know I, I have faith in myself if I'm on and he's on it's it's gonna be a great match you know it could go either way Anything you want to say to your friends, fans, family, or anybody else watching along? Friends? Where are those? Uh, everybody hates me. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're a friend. Well, I pay you, so that doesn't count. That's also fair. fair. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, tune in tonight, uh, 8, 8 o'clock Central, and I'll be coming live from Bullshooter Saloon in Milwaukee. Feel free to come on up, too, and, and watch it in person. Just don't talk to me, because... Uh, I won't like that and i'll probably cuss you out but uh as long as they can't hear it on camera i guess they'll be all right 
Um, and my sponsors, of course, you know, I always do it in alphabetical order, you know, so I got uh, Booyah Darts, Bull Shooter Saloon, uh, L, um, L style. <laughs> I'm trying to make sure I get the alphabetical part right. And uh, Monster Clothing, you know, they're, they're always, you know, a big supporter of me and everything. They're, they always got my back and help me out anytime they can. So this is going to be great. I'm looking forward to it. It's my first, uh, my first time actually playing on the CSC stream. So it, it's going to be uh, nice, you know, I'm going to like it. <laughs> We're gonna like it as well as we're so excited <laughs> for your match, Porky, and we can wish you nothing but the best of luck with it. I am AKA Porky, and you are watching the CSC Challenger Series. The new shot, Mimic Darts, as a part of the AI range. Let's do a quick review as we throw a leg of 501. Trying to play with where I want to grab the barrel. All right, before we end, a quick review of the grip. Deep radial grooves plus the axial cuts and the shape of the barrel overall having that scallop grip with the bulbous front um, leaves for a pretty optimized reference points for grip all throughout. So a really cool option to start our AI range. Let's take this tops out. Ooh. Oh no. Get in there! Thank God. I'm uh, Jules Van Dongen, play out of Sharks in Shawnee, Kansas. I play for B&G Amusement. Well, Jules Van Dongen, the Dutch Dragon, welcome back to the CSC Challenger Series, and it's a pleasure to have you back on our show. Last time we saw you, you played Kevin Schmitz in what was a really solid performance for me throughout. Uh, can you talk us through your thoughts on that match? Yeah, I, th I think Kevin probably didn't play his best. So, um, yeah, I was pretty much ghosting for the most part. I, I felt pretty good. I was really consistent. Wasn't stellar. Not a lot of nine marks and all that, but I was, I was just getting the job done and a lot of seven marks, um, good starts to the leg. And uh, yeah, I, I just got ahead. I got pretty comfortable in that match. So. Uh, just stayed consistent throughout. It was a uh, fairly comfortable win at the end. And, you know, I, I know Kevin can do a little bit better. Uh, and I think normally in a shorter format, he probably would give me a, a lot more of a match. Looking at your runs in previous TOC years, you've actually won the TOC finale in the past and the CSI. The CSC is the last real major that's been avoiding you. And of course now the CDI, which has recently been included. Um, how would it make you feel to complete that triple crown, so to say? Yeah, it'd be great. Um, obviously uh, I have to start with tonight, um, but I think for me, uh, Baggish is the favorite. You know, he's been he's been uh, playing a little bit more soft tip, probably than Steel, and it's showing. He's uh, you know he's just playing really well. Um, so yeah, if it, if it comes to that, then um, I'll prepare a little bit better. I'll probably actually practice uh, soft tip if if it comes down to that. But uh, for me, he is the number one favorite. Um, so yeah, if I would come through this match, you know, I'll have my hands full with him. And um, yeah, I would look forward to it. Great match, uh, good good uh, way to uh, you know to see where you, where you are, where my own game is. But um, yeah, let's not get ahead of ourselves. It'll be be great, but uh, not there yet. Anything you want to say to your friends, fans, family, or anybody else watching along? Uh, no, thanks for the support as always, um, and thanks to you guys for putting this on. This is. Uh, so much fun and, and, and for the players, but also for people that, that want to watch, that want to have a, a fun Monday night. It's, it's been great. It's been uh, a lot of fun, but unfortunately tonight uh, we're going to have uh, pork for dinner. Well, you heard the man here. He's coming in just as hungry. Well, almost just as hungry as Porky. He knows the, how hungry he can be. But Jules, we're excited to have you on once again. And uh, this should be a great match here. We're excited to see how it turns out. We wish you nothing but the best of luck. I'm Jules Van Dongen, and you're watching the CSC Challenger Series.
back for the break. Four to three, Jules Van Dongen over Porky. Folks, this one could end up either way right now. I mean, both competitors are right with it, right neck and neck in line with it. We're going to find out where we finish up here. William Stewart, Sean Green, Nick to share the background per usual. What do you think? I'm thinking what you're thinking. That. What are you thinking? <laughs> well, tell me, tell me what I'm thinking. If you're if you're telling me what I'm thinking, you should know what I'm thinking. Man, what a great comeback this was! All right, because so. here's here here's what I was thinking: is okay, we should all have a barbecue it. party at TOC. That's what I was thinking too. Barbecue party. Yep, for sure. All right, so anyway, uh, four mark, four mark open from both players. Now that we're through that awkwardness. Yeah, definitely awkward for sure. That was my bad. And then I just couldn't come back from the awkwardness that you made. Boom goes the dynamite there for Jules Van Dongen. Saved by the boom. That was his fifth this evening. Now, I said both these players are neck and neck. Really, they are. 5.15 for Jules, 5.09 for Hilger. Yep. Which, that is about the top ceiling range of Porky all the season. 5.09 is his best average. Um, definitely would be Jules' lowest. So, you don't know if that's... He has not been feeling well. Uh, he's been very under the weather the past few days. You'll... You heard that in his interview, I'm sure. Um, is it something else unrelated to anything that we could possibly try to come up with? You just don't know. Or could it just be the fact that he hasn't really had to shoot better? It could be anything. I mean, here's the reality of it, folks, is even your best professional players – in the land, I mean, your goats of the games, your Michael Jordans, your LeBron James, your Kobe Bryant's, those three to mention, your T Tom Brady's, all those guys have their off days too. So uh, that could play a factor here and there in some of these streamed matches. They're all they're all not super Superman or Superwoman. I'm just you just compared jewels to a lot of a lot of goats. You mentioned or you missed one though. No, I did, but I was just saying, even your goats of the game. That's what it did. William say. Stewart. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what? Although he's never missed a day. Never had an off day. Five point three three there from Jules. Five to three score line. By the way, guys, if you ever want to just make Will shut up completely and be awkward and walk away, just give him a compliment. <laughs> yeah, I, I hate it. I hate give it. Him one. I absolutely hate it. Just give him one. He will not know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely hate it. I awkwardly walk away. Say, no, well, thank you, sir. Well, uh, no, right, whatever. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Do not take compliments. They are factors that uh, get you complacent in life. Don't do that. If you're going to do something, be down on Big somebody darts. so they continue to grow. I'm pretty sure Jules has fit all three of those in the line that is on the wire of the 19s. Let's start off with a nine. <laughs> all right, so you want to know what the best part of the – WMS Dart Club jersey delivery was. So open up the box, and uh, it's covered at the beginning. And so I pull off the cover, and um, there's 13. I have 13 kids in Dart Club. Uh, there were 13 uh, Dum Dum Suckers. And there were no bad flavors. Like, there was no root beer or anything <laughs> in there. Like, it was – Jen picked, like, the top-notch flavors to put in there. And it's just so, by, so amazing. By the way, folks, Jen did, or Nick did say in the background that uh, root beer is the best one. So that is why if you we don't like don't, 
yeah, if you don't want to trust Nick, that is the reason why right there. Yeah. That is 100% the reason why. Because if you like the root beer dum-dums, you are a terrible person. It's it's why we have dart friends, and then we have friends' friends. Will and I are friends' friends. Nick is our dart friend. And, of course, your, your, your good buddy Michael Walter says root beer is the best one, and now we know why. Now we know why. Well, there's a reason why I hated my brother-in-law, and that was one of them. Big turning moment for Jules here. He goes back to the 18s, hammers it down. This to extend out to that uh, six to three spot. You can't really say a turning moment, but turning moment for the leg. <laughs> well, they should be. This is a great conversation. Dum Dum flavors is a <laughs> top notch topic. We could make a podcast off of Dub Dub flavors. Should we go back to like, can we just go candy in general? Like, we can do that as well. Because we've already talked about gummy clusters oh, being the all-time yeah, top-notch yeah. candy right now. That's wonderful. How about this? How about when your commentator is eating high chews in the break? Uh, <laughs> don't tell them a 30-minute warning uh, or 30-second warning at, right after he pops a high chew in there. They're called high chew. It takes a lot of chews to get them <laughs> chewed up. It's a high volume of chews. So uh, if that's why I wasn't on right how away. Long the interviews were. <laughs> yeah, if you only... don't even show us a timer oh, of how much is remaining. It's great. All righty. Jeez, Louise. <laughs> to the 16s for Steve here. And he's going to go back and, and listen to this and absolutely grill me for calling him Steve this whole time instead of Porky. He cannot stand when people call him Steve Hoger. He said it's Porky. Even even uh, in my interview with Gary Rakowski, he said, I don't know who that Steve Hoger guy is. That's Porky. Makes me wonder what his mother called him. Or if he was like, my name's not Steve, it's Porky to his mom. I doubt it. He's He's too nice for that. Looking more and more like a six to three matchup yeah. here. Okay, yeah. all right. The Steven Dutch Dragon just doing his job. Steven throwing another winger here. He says, "Bro, Dum Dums are terrible. Get a Tootsie Pop." What, dude? Wh what is this? The fifties? Oh. What is this? I don't know. The blue ones are like the grape flavor because they're not really a blue. Um, those aren't bad. They got some iffy flavors, dude. They got chocolate and root beer as well. Like, what? What? R root beer Tootsie Pop have you had? They have chocolate. Got, that's the grossest they've ever. Got, okay, that's a, okay. it's chocolate. Yeah. I'm thinking root beer then. Yeah. And then, of course, it's it's Tootsie Rolls in the middle of that, which is never good for anyone. Um, it's like, eat the good stuff to get to the bad stuff. Um, all right. We can keep talking about candy all day long. Right now, it's six to three. Jules over Porky. And boom goes the Wisconsinite to get us started here in leg number 10. Quick math. <laughs> How about Big Dog in the chat saying, can you tag in Garrett? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Randy Van Dushen always throws in a good line or two I, right I when swear, you need it. Everyone in Wisconsin are friends with each other so much so that if you're not being uh, talked down to by someone, then they you're in trouble there. Okay. Can, can we – hot topic. Can we – because we're talking about candy. I got to go back <laughs> of to Of course. It. Why? How many Why us, not? How many, us believe, how many of us believe that that little star – on the Tootsie Pop roll meant that you were gonna get like a free a free one. Did you believe that wives tale back in the day? What are you talking about, man? <laughs> You've never heard that? All right, there's an old tale back in the day that if you got the uh, little star that the Native American with the arrow was sh was shooting, that you could get 
a free Tootsie Pop at the at the store. That was like a wives' tale. You guys have never told that back in the day? We'll no. start, everybody. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Bro, oh my God. See, see, yes, I heard of that. One yes, person. I heard of that. Yep. Oh God. Okay. See, some people, it's a, it's a wide zone, uh. so, certain areas, certain areas. <laughs> told you, bro. I'm that not, was a gutsy I'm callback, not, man. That, that I told you. <laughs> Boom goes the dynamite there for JVD. Oh. Man. Uh. Here we go. Hilger, close the door here. Get you another leg on the board. He opens the door is what he does instead. Four bowls and a trip. Two more bowls. Oh. See, everybody is actually real. How about that? I just never cashed in on it. What the heck? In the mid-80s, you weren't alive, bro. <laughs> it's because you weren't alive, bro. <laughs> When your dad uh, was a kid, maybe that was a thing. He just he just tried to get me to hold on to him for no damn yeah. reason. <laughs> or maybe he's like he was just so used to that, like being like the fun thing to get that he's like, all right, let's collect those. That's good. That's good. Pops, are you still here? Probably hopefully not. He's, but... Hopefully he's dying laughing right now because <laughs> if he's listening in, he is. Uh. <laughs> All right, Porky. Come on, give us another one here. Make the 6-5. I just want more darts, ladies and gentlemen. There's no denying that. And and I'll be honest. Both these guys. More time to talk about candy. Yeah. Top, I'm no, about top notch, top notch individuals. When you talk about Jules, you talk about Steve. Both these guys, as we get a white horse across the board, and I'm not going to say that dumb phrase that uh, Sean's been saying lately. Well, it's a horse of a different color. <laughs> You just had to go there, didn't you? Yeah, you you brought it up, bro. I did. I did. <laughs> you teed it up for me to knock it out of the park. What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to let it go? Yes, you're supposed to just leave it. <laughs> just not say it. No, but both these guys. No one's ever I'm called F me Elsa before. <laughs> good, good praise. <laughs> um, I can tell that it actually was for you. Any, anytime you approach... Any either of these guys, just for a straight up conversation, they're gonna give you their time. Like similar, like you said to Alex Spellman, they'll give you five minutes, let alone thirty minutes most of the time. It's just they're top notch. Jules trying to get this win with just twenty points on the board. How how often do we see that? Never. That is that is a a never situation. Uh, maybe one person at a time at this level. That's that's kind of crazy that we saw that right there. Yeah. Now back to what matters. What about the McDonald's uh, Monopoly game, dude? That oh, thing was clutch. so cool, and then they all ruined it. Clutch. Just had to ruin it by cheating. They, Gosh. Yep. They threw in that. They threw in that Pepsi game, too. Oh, that, that was the, uh, that was the best. Oh yeah. Private Jet. That was a good Netflix documentary. It was, yep. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple good things. Yeah, the Monopoly game was a real winner there for a while. Yeah, good seven. Back to back. Yeah, we never, there, had a, folks. never had a shot. Never had a shot at Monopoly. Didn't even know it. Luckily, it came out though. You know, at least they were like, "Yeah, we did that." Okay. Yeah, it was definitely a scam, but I mean, it was pretty cool. It definitely pushed the business. All right, the Dutch Dragon has kind of picked it up here after the break. Found himself in a groove, and he does it again. Breathing that fire. It is the year of the dragon. Yeah, really starting to find his stride here. Is That is his eighth. I'm counting for the evening. Seven, four score line. And again, I don't know why I've said this. Multiple times, I felt like Porky just needed to win every leg with a throw, keep it really close the entire way. Um, it's just going to be so hard for him 
the longer this goes on and the more nine marks that Jules continues to hit for Porky to get back in this thing. Well, Tyler, I can uh, count to 10 using both my hands. And I quit. I quit. <laughs> because I'm not even throwing. <laughs> Sorry, Tyler. I love you, buddy. <laughs> I think I won the <laughs> crying <laughs> laughing tonight. That was six point eight zero. Why would you do that? Why you would are you crying. do that? <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> why would you do that, dude? <laughs> That's why. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. I have. <laughs> uh... It might start off in good fun with some candy conversation, <laughs> but it just takes one Tyler Hensley to jump in and Sean takes it way overboard. Tyler, you know I love Gosh. you so much. Can I get now taking applications for somebody that's not gonna what? go to hand comments every time? Well, that's fair. <laughs> you're still crying. You're still, you still can't get over it. See, he goes, always love. And I know. And I know that even Will is supposed to know that, but he still reacts crazy to it every time. Because I just can't believe you still say it. It's just... <laughs> Oh my, wife, oh my, my god. My wife is good with it. She says you're going to get fired and then the, then I get my life back, so go for it. Another big 9 mark from Jules there. As he's going to He's going to put this one away and I'm going to be all red-eyed because I've been crying. Yep. I'm not going to touch that. Well, Tyler, I appreciate it. In a good way? Hopefully in a good way. <laughs> I can see just ESPN just <laughs> laughing hysterically at some of those comments there, Sean. Oh, listen, I'm not I'm not aiming for them. Oh gosh. All right, come on, Porky. Get you another one here on the board. Make a stand. Certainly trying, but I think that Jules should go ahead and take away the 16s here. Start three. Yeah, he looked at it. You can tell, though, he's, he's, he's making the right choices. Go ahead and point up to where he needs to and, and then go at it. Don't feel obligated tell he, to go right at it. And you can tell he's feeling good, too, with this throw because he's moving around, bending down a little bit, um, kicking up his foot as he follows through. And that just means that his he knows his arm is staying dead steady, and so like he he's put a little extra in the in the motions there. Look at that, Jules Van Dongen, eight mark. That might do it. The pork might be ready to eat. It might be roasted. But he has done. I mean, he shot well tonight. Four to three going no. into the break. It's just. It, Jules picked he was up. definitely most of the evening, and I think he's going to still end up above his average, uh, but most of the evening, but, you know, above his average, and he knew he was going to need to bring his A game here this evening. I think he's done that. It's just, you know, Jules br started bringing it here in the latter stages of this match and really putting it, make it, making it tough, especially after the break is the main thing that we're talking about there. After the break, he really just came out hot and put his foot on the gas and. Nice. Yeah. Two bulls away. 
from a king seat match between Danny Baggish, and that'll be a ooh, that'll be a good one. Yeah, that one. Man, I bet. What's it going to take to win that match? Well, it will be Jules Van Dongen taking on Danny Baggish in your king seat of the CSC Chandler Series Season six. Six. It's Porky. <laughs> <laughs> Shows off uh, his his jeans to to Porky there, uh, to Jules. But Porky will head to the fifth six spot. I'm telling you, man. Monday, Wednesday nights are just just for fun. <laughs> They're just for fun. Well, the, the the reality is is the characters that we have involved in this CSC, and you should see some of the banter beforehand between these players because yep. it is quality stuff. And and yeah, we do have a moment to laugh or whatever it's because these guys are gonna go back and have a have a laugh with us here and there and we all know that that you guys if we kept it all serious business most of you guys would would get out of here and leave so that's the reason why we have a laugh here and there and talk about candy and dumb stuff like dumb dumbs why not but yeah speak keep yeah keep keep your hands to yourself next time sean okay well I noticed you use the pearl there, and I just want to point that out. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Listen, that's your fault. It's so easy. That is your fault. Why? Your fault. fault. Why? All right. Listen, what a great, (laughs) great, great match. Uh, Jules shot fantastic, uh, picked it up. It went from fives right to sixes and i think that that yeah. was the the leap that we saw from jules and he'll he'll need that when he plays danny i cannot wait for that match that's going to be a, an incredible king seat match um no one uh watching along is going to want to miss that one i can tell you that we won't be talking about candy very much um <laughs> most likely we probably will what am i talking about uh <laughs> listen we'll just keep we'll just keep you from saying boom goes the dynamite 42 hey. times like we may see what Coming can I up. say? Except you're welcome. Um, and then Mike Scarborough versus Tyler Henze is going to be an absolutely fantastic match. I can't wait for that one either. Uh, we got we knew coming into the season that they were going to be the the best two seasons that we've had, or best two divisions in each season. And man, they definitely have showed up here. And I cannot wait to see the conclusion of this. Certainly so. And what do we got for you Wednesday night? How about Jake Smith taking on Brett Hollanday in what should be an ultimate battle? There's no denying that one. Those two uh, yep. heavy hitters are. Going to bring it in Division 2. Definitely a uh, one that you want to tune into. 8 p.m. Central yeah. Time, Wednesday night, per usual. We'll be here yeah, we, live. Former champion taking on a former C, or Division 1 CC Chandler Series from last season. And a darn good one, too, and Jake Smith. So, um, Brett Hollanday, like former champion, you're never going to count him out. And he shot fantastic his season when he went on to win. Average right around a five the entire time. So, I'm expecting firepower. Unfortunately, you will be without me on wednesday uh thank god yeah so i had to get on my Ugh. all of my jokes uh in tonight so you're welcome um but yeah no i'll, I'll miss you guys i'll be watching uh, but i'll be driving back from michigan city so there we go well thanks for watching folks we appreciate it jules van dong and danny baggish sometime soon you'll have to wait for when we uh, announce that one but until next time we'll bid you adieu will stewart sean green and nick to in the background take care folks have a great night guys <laughs>